Welcome back. You're watching ED Insight. India boasts of having the world's largest BPO industry with a 36% market share in the global pie. But its position as the number one destination is in danger. Swati Dissusa tells you why India's BPO sector is not shining as brightly as it used to. Tough times are ringing in for India's 85,000 crore rupee BPO sector. Uncertainties in the global economic environment and the outcry against offshore outsourcing in large markets like the US and Europe took a toll on the sector last year. Chances are that this year will not be any better either. There was enough volatility in 2011. The way we think about 2012 is there will be volatility. Uh, there will be uncertainty. And if we go and talk to our clients, most of them will say the same thing. It's uncertain, it's volatile, constant change. Uh, but at the same time, it's therefore not going to be any worse than 2012, than 2011, is our view. Um, but we should be prepared for all kinds of ups and downs. That's the world we are in. So the uh, macroeconomic situation is uh, uncertain, and um, especially in Europe, there is a cut, there is a pressure on public sector spending. So, and, and as of now, there is a limited visibility, I have to say, on the um, second half of 2012. So, uh, you know, we are actually predict predicting limited um, organic growth. To know how bad the situation is, let's take a look at the U.S. market, which has historically been the biggest market for the Indian BPOs, contributing nearly half of the sector's revenues. But the slowdown in U.S. has taken a toll on the sector. And even though BPOs have expanded territory into Latin America and Europe these past few years, the U.S. still remains the sector's single largest market. So how does the future look? Everybody is going to be somewhat cautious. This is a tough time to predict. And so you're going to see everybody sort of, uh, you know, watching their neck. Indeed it is. High unemployment in the U.S. and the upcoming elections mean that the mood against outsourcing is set to get worse. In fact, the US government is pushing for anti-outsourcing legislations like the US call center bill. If passed, the new bill will penalize US call centers with a penalty of $10,000 a day for failing to report relocation to an offshore location to the US Department of Labor. Call center operators will also have to identify their location to the caller and the caller will have the option of choosing to speak to a US based operator. In short, Indian BPOs have a lot to worry about. One could argue there's a certain amount of um, protectionism in, in, in the US. Um, that really leads, they need to maintain their multi-shore strategies. Um, to get the big deals, you've always needed onshore capability as well as offshore capability. So getting the right pragmatic mix there um, is, is certainly important in driving the industry. Um, beyond that, <coughs> sorry, uh, the areas that uh, the BPO companies have been going down already. Um, labor arbitrage is still very important. Um, maintaining that advantage, possibly starting to move out in, 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 into a new cities is always an important part of the mix. But India's edge as a cheap labor market is fading. According to A.T. Kearney, last year Philippines and Vietnam beat India in terms of financial attractiveness and Egypt was running neck to neck with India on the same parameter. Last year, the outsourcing sector in Philippines grew at a scorching pace of 20% compared to the 11-14% to growth in India. That's not all. Philippines beat India in the voice-based BPO services delivery segment last year. That's despite the fact that voice services are 5-15% to more expensive in Philippines than they are in India. And now, if India wants to retain its position in the global outsourcing pie, it has to pull off something new and radically different. The challenge then is not just to find new clients in new geographies, but to innovate. Several companies are already doing that. They are tweaking business models and designing specific strategies for each vertical. Our strategy is you know, very clear. It's just focusing on these three key, key differentiators, end-to-end -end vertical strategy, technology-enabled BPO, unique client-centric client partner model, this along with a very strong sales orientation which is across all geographies is what we are focused on. The good news is that the BPO business thrives in adversity. As global clients look to cut costs more aggressively, they will outsource critical functions. So which are the sectors that will come calling in? 
see, BFS had per se the banking financial services insurance. It's a big sector and in the market we address, which is other than the big boys and the bigger market, the need there is, is huge. If you look at uh, the retail sector, which is another sector we address, uh, the, the, the margins are under a uh, big amount of threat. Their options of what they can do with offshoring and outsourcing is huge. The opportunities are huge, but only large players with a strong foothold in global markets may be able to tap them. Because when it comes to offering low cost to clients, size does matter. Proof of that is the fact that eight large-scale IT and BPO companies employing about 35% of the sector's workforce account for about 44 to 47% of export revenues. 75 to 80 mid-sized BPOs account for about 35 to 37% of export revenues and employ about 25 to 28% of the workforce. In sharp contrast, nearly 4,000 emerging and small companies have just about 15 to 18% of business each. While the large players may weather the storm, it's the mid-sized and smaller players that will find it tough to survive. Traditional demand patterns are changing. So what has helped the offshore industry to grow in the last five years is not likely to help us to grow in the next five years. Hence, uh, we as the industry have to transform. We have been very conservative planning our budgets for 2012 because we don't know what direction Europe is going to go. So we are ready with the worst case scenarios uh, to manage that. But that's not to say that it's gloom and doom all the way. BPOs are charting new territories in order to be less dependent on traditional markets like the US and Europe. For instance, several of them are focusing on BRIC nations, continental Europe and Japan, which had an IT spending of over $183 billion, but contributed to just 12% of revenues. Many of them are also focusing on small and medium businesses, which have an IT spend of $185 billion, but contribute 15% of revenues. Ditto with the public sector, healthcare, media and utilities, which have IT spends of nearly $600 billion, but contribute to just 20% of revenues. The point then is simple. There's plenty of opportunity yet to be tapped by Indian BPOs. How much of that actually gets tapped will depend on the value they are able to offer their global clients. Indeed, and to ensure that the going remains good, IT and BPO companies are now going back to the drawing board and working out new strategies. That story is coming up after the short break. Stay with us.